Hello everyone! Today, I wanted to talk about this spectacular compact disc. If you're like most people, you're probably confused by me calling it spectacular. Please just hear me out until the end, and I'm confident that you will admit that CDs are the superior audio format when you're done watching this video. Let me explain why I say that. First off, a CD's clarity is much higher than anything that you could download or stream these days. The bitrate of a CD is 1411 kilobits per second, while anything that you could download or stream these days will max out at about 320 kilobit per second, and most of which actually will top out at 160 kilobit per second. That means that CDs are almost nine times clearer than the way that you currently enjoy your music. If you were to stream a song on Spotify and then listen to the same song on a CD, I guarantee you will hear the difference. I find the audio from a CD so orgasmic that I could listen to Christmas music in July. To help me make my point here, let's look at the history of the CD. This, I say again, spectacular audio format was invented by James Russell in 1979 and introduced to the market by Sony and Philips in 1982. They teamed up and set out to create an improved audio medium. In October of 1982, they introduced the world's first CD player. It was the Sony CDP-101. The original price was around $1,000 and that is equivalent to about $3,000 today. CDs never really changed over the years. They were designed with the compound polycarbonate plastic and had a diameter of 120 millimeters and a thickness of 1.2 millimeters. They eventually did come out with the three inch CD, heart shaped CDs and other weird shaped CDs, but we all know the CD to be about the size of our hand. The way that CDs would store audio on the disc is with really tiny pits inside of the disc. There are about 16 billion pits on a disc and they range in size from 0.833 microns up to 3.054 microns. If you zoomed in really close, it would look like this. They would generally store about 74 minutes of audio on a disc. Soon after CDs came out, it was clear to consumers that CDs were the premium format. You could quickly change songs unlike other options at the time and it was much more convenient than the vinyl. The first CD was the album Living Eyes by the Bee Gees and it would run you about $30 around release time. Not long after, CDs would get much cheaper costing around $20 or $60 today. But lucky for you, you can find CDs dirt cheap from a plethora of places. CDs were getting manufactured all over the world and it wasn't long before manufacturing kicked off in the United States. It shouldn't come as a surprise that the first CD pressed in the United States was Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA. Overall, CD sales did peak in 2001 but are still proving they are alive. More than 250 billion CDs have been sold to date and that number continues to grow. Something that made CDs so attractive was their lack of copyright protection. This means that if you owned a CD recorder, you could really easily make your own mixtapes. Some CD recorders would allow five CDs to be loaded and offer programmable recording for personalizing a mix. It would even split up the tracks for you and let you name them what you please. Let's say you loaded a CD into a player. It will spin up to 500 RPMs or rotations per minute reading along a spiral track that is around 3.52 miles long. That's probably longer than the drive between you and your closest Walmart. Speaking of driving, the first car company to include a built-in CD player was the Mercedes-Benz. It wasn't long before car manufacturers and audio companies began installing disc changers for more convenient listening. They were designed specifically for vehicles and included anti-skip features that worked surprisingly well. Unfortunately, car manufacturers these days are doing away with the CD format and really honing in on Bluetooth audio. Speaking of futurizing things, CDs were a major stepping stone for DVDs and Blu-rays. The audio bitrate of a Blu-ray is capable of being higher than that of a CD. Blu-ray has an audio bitrate of over 1411 while streaming services with 4K video still struggle to even 
break the 200 kilobit per second mark. Even with rapidly changing standards in the audio community, CDs still prove that they are the best using the same technology that they were using in the 80s. With CDs, you get a nearly unlimited range of music as more songs and albums were printed on the format than anything that is available on downloadable services. Downloading is another dilemma for modern digital media. With CDs, you don't need any kind of subscription, internet, or anything like that to listen to your music. You might be thinking that streaming is still more convenient than CDs just because the act of changing out CDs all the time is just way too much work. You know what? I'm right there with you. That is why Sony came out with the 400 disc player in the early 2000s. This made listening to your music as simple as pushing one button. Excellent for us lazy folk. It's hapless that CD player manufacturers have stepped away from the market and ended production. There are still a couple of manufacturers in the game, but they tend to focus on high-end single disc players. Most of which aren't affordable, and all the affordable ones have frequent problems that you can't really get rid of, as with many things manufactured these days. Your best option is to find yourself a refurbished or used CD player. That may sound crazy, but just consider the fact that we can all agree on. Things manufactured in the 80s, 90s, and thousands were made much more integrally than anything manufactured these days, as many things come from China and include really cheap plastic parts on them. If you're looking to buy one, you can get it from our website at spendcertified.com. Thank you very much for watching this video all the way until the end. We hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and have a terrific day.